What is going on world? What's up YouTube? It's Zero here and today I'm bringing you guys a brand new episode of The 8 Below Show. Welcome everyone to 8 Below. Thanks for being here guys to the best gaming related show here on YouTube and I'm super excited about our episode here today. We have a lot of stuff to talk about so let's get into it. Guys, I gotta say before we actually get into the official show here, it's awesome to be back. I'm back guys. So excited about it. It's been it's been a while since I've obviously been here and been in front of the camera. This is the new studio, guys. This is what it's going to look like, the new room, the new setup. Obviously, it's going to be evolving with time, but I'm super excited about it, guys. We're down here now in South Carolina. Came from Ohio to South Carolina. We're so excited about it. I'm so excited to be back with all of you creating content. What you guys can expect is daily videos. So every single day, guys, a new video is going to come up. So what I'm going to ask of all of you is really simple. Just hit the thumbs up button and that's going to help out the YouTube channel in a massive way. Subscribe if you guys like the content. That's going to help me out a ton as well. And enjoy. Let's get into it. With the announcement of Battlefield 2042, there was a lot of people obviously chiming in on their thoughts about Battlefield 2042 and everything that it pretty much encompasses at this point in time, or at least what we know. And so what I want to talk about in this segment of the show is everything that we know so far about Battlefield 2042. We can break it down, and I would love to have a real conversation with all of you guys exactly about that. So let's get into it. So guys, this is an article that was written by Tyler Wilde of PC Gamer. All the Battlefield 2042 details. The next Battlefield game is Battlefield 2042 thrusting the large scale FPS series into a near future Earth. So where stateless mercenaries fight for superpowers. So that's all fine, but for once, the new setting isn't the focus of a Battlefield reveal. So the big news is that Battlefield 2042 doubles the player count to 128, redefines the class system to feature specialists with unique gadgets. The previous Battlefield games have all tweaked the basic Battlefield format, but this feels like the most significant change to the series since it started in 2002 almost 20 years ago, and I 100% agree with that. So let's talk about the release date. So the release date, guys, is October 22nd, 2021. On PC, it's releasing on Origin, Steam, and the Epic Games Store. So obviously, it'll be on PS5, Xbox Series X, S, um, and then, of course, cross-play support has not been announced as of yet. Um, obviously, it will also... Um, be coming to PS4 as well as Xbox One. Now, the big thing though, guys, you got to take these dates with a pinch of salt. Coming out October 22nd, 2021, with everything going on in the world, guys, with the pandemic and such, sure, it looks like there's a light at the end of the tunnel. We're definitely close to getting there, but it still may push certain titles back. I think that we'll be able to stick with this date, October 22nd, or that being, of course, DICE and EA. Hopefully, we're able to stick with this date but maybe, just maybe, it'll get pushed back a little bit. Hopefully, that's not the case, though. So, obviously, guys, 128 player specialists and no single player. Um, so, let's talk about that. You know, so the max player count has been doubled to 128 on PC and current gen consoles. Awesome. 128 player maps are divided into sectors containing clusters of control points. Capture all the control points in a sector in a sector to control it. Classes have been replaced by specialists. Characters who have unique gadgets but can carry any gun. Gadgets we've seen, a grappling hook, a health revive gun, a movement sensor, um, and as well as a wingsuit. There's no battle royale mode and no single player campaign. Now, they say no battle royale mode, but we know, guys, from watching the trailers that just the storm alone, you know, that being like the cyclone or the tornado that's on the map and such, that really gives you this indication that there very well might be a battle royale mode at some point. I think they could really twist something there to, to be really awesome. So there's no battle royale mode right now. Maybe at some point there will be. The no single player campaign is a huge blow, in my opinion, to this title. I'm very excited about Battlefield 2042, but when we're talking about there's no single player campaign, they're saying right now no Battle Royale mode, at least at first. Um, that's pretty, it's really disheartening. Now, 128 players is absolutely awesome, but my big question is, is are we going to have large maps as well as some small maps? Because I really feel that Battlefield needs to take a page out of Call of Duty's book. 
you know, Call of Duty has bigger maps now. They also have small maps, right, that they're known for. Battlefield's known for the big maps, but I think that they also need some smaller scale maps where there's like, if you want to play fast, you can play fast. If you want to play slow, you can play slower, more realistic. I just feel like if you're going to have no single player campaign, you got to have a ton of content in the multiplayer. And I really hope that's what happens. So how does 128 player maps work? An increased player count is uh, accommodated by bigger maps that are divided into sectors. Within each sector, there's essentially a mini battlefield match playing out. In the standard conquest mode, teams can hold a sector by holding all the points within it. It sounds like you could spend all your time hanging out in one map sector, but there's nothing stopping you from calling in a vehicle and heading elsewhere. So basically what it sounds like, it's a battle royale title, but not battle royale. Or I should say like a battle royale map. So it's almost like Warzone or like Fortnite. The map's probably going to be constantly evolving over time, but they're not going to have other maps or they're not going to have other ways in which you can connect with this title outside of one map and such. Uh, that's the only thing that's really bothering me about Battlefield 2042 at this point. 128 players is awesome, but are there other modes you can play? Are there other, you know, uh, what else really comes with this? I mean, is it really just going to be on one map like Warzone and you're going to pay $60 when you can play Warzone for free? That's Those are big question marks. How do the specialists work? What will likely be the most contentious change in Battlefield 2042 is the introduction of specialists. They're sort of like Rainbow Six Siege operators in that they have names, backstories, and special gadgets and abilities, but they're more flexible because they can use any weapon you've unlocked. Battlefield class archetypes like Assault and Recon are still there, but DICE now describes them as categories which specialists fit into. Which, there will be 10 specialists at launch, and I'm totally okay with that. That's... I think that's actually that might actually be pretty awesome. Um, so the specialists that have been announced, you got Casper, Webster, Maria, uh, Boris. Uh, these are just some, right? One's an engineer, one's a support, assault, and recon. Awesome. So Battlefield 2042 modes, no single player, no battle royale, uh, battle royale, and there's two mysteries. So Battlefield may have finally given in and become a character shooter, but it hasn't been tempted again by that other modern shooter trend. There's no battle royale mode, and there are no plans to make one. I, I'll say this, guys. I'll believe it when I see it that like over time they decide like, hey, we're just not going to do it. Battlefield's way too big of a title to not at least at least attempt battle royale outside of Firestorm. The Battlefield 5's Firestorm mode is not returning, at least not for now. There's no single-player campaign either, although you will be able to play multiplayer-style matches entirely against bots and progress that way if you want. Apparently, the AI has gotten a lot better. Um, All-out warfare is the term DICE is using to encompass your standard Battlefield modes. Announced so far, that's the classic point capture of Conquest and the more linear attack and defend battles of Breakthrough. Beyond all-out warfare, there are two mystery modes. One is called Hazard Zone and will be a high-risk squad-focused mode, but not a Battle Royale mode. That's all DICE will say, but based on that description of the name, I think we're pretty safe in assuming that inspiration has been taken from the Division's Dark Zone, Hunt Showdown, and Escape from Tarkov. Um, a third mode was, uh, was created by DICE LA and will be revealed at EA Play Live on July 22nd. So let's just kind of talk about it. I mean... The modes, there's three modes, guys. All Out War, Warfare, Hazard Zone, and Dice LA mode. Uh, you know, it's a little bit um, concerning to me that you're only going to have a few different modes, especially when we're talking about a multiplayer-only title at this point in time, unless, you know, that, that changes at some point. That's the only thing that really concerns me about this title, at least at this point, is that you're going to only have a few different modes, and there's no Battle Royale, there's no single-player story, and those modes seem to be pretty, you know, uh, kind of uh, confined to a certain space. They're not so much... Now, we, we don't know until we actually get our hands on the game, but it's a little bit concerning because this game's got a ton of promise, guys. The way I went from what I've looked at so far, the gameplay and such, or even just the, obviously, all the different trailers and the special effects are awesome. I mean, it looks like it's going to be great, but this just is a little bit concerning to me, at least at this point. 
Now, what are the setting vehicles and maps like? So Battlefield 2042 is set just 21 years in the future, so the tech isn't too out there. Drones, robot dogs, etc. The premise is the usual galaxy brain speculation. Due to global warming, a number of the world's countries have collapsed, leaving large parts of Earth's population stateless. Naturally, stateless people have formed elite mercenary armies who now fight on behalf of the U.S. and Russia, or maybe for themselves. The vehicles are near-future versions of jets, helicopters, tanks, and other ground vehicles, and you can call them in from the sky. The maps look cool and have big destruction set pieces such as the rocket on orbital, which can either have a smooth launch or a not-so-smooth la launch. Um, here are the seven all-out warfare maps that'll be at launch. So, uh, one of them, uh, Kaleidoscope. Manifest, Orbital, Discarded, Renewal, Hourglass, and Breakaway. So, you know, they've got, you know, seven maps that'll be there at launch. Nothing, you know, I mean, seven maps, I mean, that's that's fine. I'm just a little bit concerned about the lack of modes. You know, you've got some maps, but you've got such a lack of modes. Now, maybe it'll be fine. May, you know, maybe it'll be absolutely awesome once it comes out and everybody's totally fine with there being less because maybe less will be more at the at the end of the day. Now, pre-launch and post-launch plans. This is pretty big. So there will be a Battlefield 2042 technical test in early July for players identified as Battlefield veterans. So at some point after that, Hazard Zone will be available to play early, and there will be a Battlefield 2042 open beta for those who pre-ordered. Battlefield 2042 will release in full on October 22nd. As usual, the PC version will be available on EA's origin store but this time it'll also be on steam and the epic games store new specialists and maps will come in seasons and there will be a uh, be four per year each which includes battle passes with free and paid tiers he has said that new maps will always be free for all players so at the end of the day guys i think that there's a lot of there is hype behind battlefield 2042 but i also think that there's a lot of speculation as well as concern about there not being like enough content not enough there for how long the battlefield community has waited for this title I know speaking from the Call of Duty community, we get a new COD every single year. And for the most part, those Call of Duty titles include a, you know, a brand new story mode, multiplayer modes, you know, co-op or whether that's zombies or it's, you know, wh whatever it might be. And then on top of that, you have a free-to-play battle royale in the form of Warzone, which is a smash success at this point. So Battlefield on the flip side of this been waiting a while for a new Battlefield title. The community got futuristic, which is awesome, which is what mostly the entire Battlefield community overall wanted. But you're kind of, it's its a little bit, there's almost a lack of content. Now, maybe over time, it's going to really build up and ramp up over time. But right now, pretty, it, it's not too much as of yet. And with no Battle Royale and, and no single player story, there is reason to have concerns and doubts about what Battlefield 2042 could be. I'm still going to be super optimistic about it because I think it looks awesome and I'm excited about it. And I'll be sure to give you guys more updates and more content on Battlefield 2042 as we get closer. So with that being said, guys, what do you think about Battlefield 2042 from everything that we know so far? What do you think? Are you excited about it? Are you concerned? Let me know in the comment section down below. And for more Battlefield 2042 content and videos, stay here with Zero TV. With E3 2021 wrapped up, guys, one of the biggest titles that people have been talking about is none other than Starfield. We got our first look at this title, guys, and I want to talk about it and, and break it down, all the things that we know so far about this title now that we saw a glimpse at what could be coming here in the near future. So let's talk about it. So in an article, guys, written by Felicia Miranda of IGM, Starfield is an upcoming space-based RPG from Bethesda Game Studios. Positioned as the next big RPG to stand alongside Bethesda's well-known series like Elder Scrolls and Fallout, it will be the first game out of that studio to center around a new universe in over 25 years, which is absolutely massive. So the big thing, the release date, guys, 
At the Xbox and Bethesda Games Showcase at E3 2021, a trailer officially revealed the Starfield release date. It's scheduled to arrive on November 11th, 2022, and will be an Xbox uh, console exclusive launching solely on Xbox Series X, S, and PC. So, this also gives you an idea in your mind, when are games going to start being exclusive to the new consoles and kind of move away from the older gen consoles, that being like PlayStation 4 and Xbox One, uh, it looks like it very well might be 2022. So the Starfield trailer, guys, it centers around an astronaut as they make their way through a ship and prepare for takeoff. After arriving in a room where they place down their gun, the trailer zooms in on a shelf labeled Stowe 84S with the white case marked as property of Constellation. The trailer then zooms in on an image taped to the wall. What's in the image is unclear, but as the astronaut climbs into their seat, an individual from an organization called Constellation radios in and confirms the astronaut for their departure. They say the wonder is not that the field of stars is so vast, but that we have measured it. You're part of Constellation now, part of our family. What you found is the key to unlocking everything. This is all we've been working towards. We've come to the beginning of humanity's final journey. That's why we're here to discover what's out there. Really reminds me, of something like Interstellar, like the movie Interstellar. And I got to say, guys, I, 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 I'm really liking it. So, you know, there's a lot of talk, guys, as far as, you know, the story is concerned. Not much other than bits and pieces have been revealed about Starfield's mysterious protagonists and their story. We know it takes place about 300 years in the, into the future and involves a space organization called Constellation, which feels very reminiscent of NASA. Howard calls them the last group of space explorers. So Howard confirmed that while Constellation is the primary group players will be part of in Starfield, it is one of many groups players will encounter and can join throughout their journey. Howard has called Starfield an epic and said it will ask big questions like, are we alone in the universe? Why are we here? What are the origins of space and time? And what role does religion play in all of it? That is awesome, man. Like, that is so cool. I love hearing, you know, Howard talk about, about like, just all of those things. Those are huge questions that none of us know, right? Why are we here? You know, um, what else is out there? You know, uh, what are the origins of space and time? You know, that is so awesome. Are we alone in the universe? I mean, those are really cool questions, and hopefully they do answer those in, in, a, in a pretty major way um, in this, or at least to the best of their knowledge, right? Just to make a really cool story. I'm excited about this, to say the least, guys. Even though we didn't see a ton of, you know, a, a ton at the reveal of, of Starfield, I got to say, though, the vibes I got from it, this is going to be something special. So Starfield gameplay hasn't been shown yet, but there are a few features that have been confirmed. The official Starfield site says you'll be able to create any character you want and explore with unparalleled freedom. Kind of sounds like some of some of the things that we're getting in Starfield remind me a little bit of Fallout. Uh, Todd Howard said you'll also be able to choose your character's background and revealed customizations can affect how your character's story unfolds. Absolutely awesome. Um, first person for us is still our prime way of playing, so you can see the world and touch all those things. Keeping in theme with previous Bethesda games, players can expect to encounter NPCs, and this will include humans, aliens, and even robots. Another, a nod to this can be found in the Starfield trailer shown at the Xbox and Bethesda showcase during E3 2021. If you look closely, you can spot a note on a blackboard to a robot named Vasco asking them to pick up some tranquility with specific instructions not to get decap. Howard said Starfield will have a word that invites players to explore, interact, and test the boundaries of the game. We're still a year and some change away from the launch of Starfield, so we're guaranteed to hear and see some more about it as we get closer. Exciting stuff, guys, to say the least. I mean, you know, Starfield, there's just, there's a lot to this. There's a lot of mystery to it, but I think that this is definitely going to be, I mean, a massive title for Bethesda and Xbox 
buying out Bethesda and now holding the rights to it. They've got, you know, Starfield, you got the next Elder Scrolls, you got the next Fallout, whenever that's going to be coming out. You've got all these titles that are going to be coming out here and they're all going to be on Xbox. It's a massive power move for Xbox now to have Starfield as well because this could be a massive title to say the least. So with that being said, guys, I'm excited about Starfield. Are you excited about it? Are you on the fence? Do you want to see more? Let me know in the comment section down below. And for more Starfield content and videos, stay here with Zero TV. Diablo 2 Resurrected is going to be up and coming, guys. It's been something that's been speculated for a while, a Diablo 2 remake. And I got to say, guys, I'm really excited about it. And I definitely want to talk about everything that we know so far about the Diablo 2 Resurrected up and coming title. So let's get into it. In an article, guys, written by Shabana Arif of Tom's Guide, Diablo 2 Resurrected will give a massive overhaul to Blizzard's 20 year old game. Diablo 2 Resurrected is a full reboot of the Blizzard's hack and slash RPG first released two decades ago. It promises updated graphics, 4K gaming, and all the content from Diablo 2 and its expansions. However, Diablo 2 Resurrected is a remaster, not a remake. As head of Diablo, Rod Ferguson stressed at the initial announcement, gameplay-wise, fans can look forward to 3D models and quality of life changes improving on the original experience. So that's really exciting. It's going to be launching on Battle.net means that we'll see features available on release that weren't around back in 2000 like dedicated servers and easy access to your friends list so um, that's really exciting a downside though is that modding will be affected because of battle.net's stricter security measures but mods will still be allowed so long as they're not injecting code straight into the game so When's the release date? This is what, obviously, huge guys. The release date for Diablo 2 Resurrected is September 23rd, 2021. The date was announced during the Xbox E3 2021 show. The remaster is set to launch on PC, Xbox Series X, Series S, Xbox One, PS4, as well as PS5 and Nintendo Switch. So that's really exciting. Trailer, guys, was, um, was awesome. I thought that it looks really good. If you guys have not seen it yet, definitely go ahead and check it out. Now, as far as the beta is concerned, Blizzard is running a Diablo 2 Resurrected multiplayer open beta in August. That means that anyone can participate in the shenanigans, but there's all, there's early access for players who opt to pre-order. Five of the game's final seven character classes will be available to try out in the beta, including the Amazon, Barbarian, Paladin, and Sorceress from the core game, and the Druid from the Lord of Destruction expansion. What's awesome, guys, is... It's really cool to be a part of the Diablo community right now, to say the least. With, obviously, the announcement of Diablo 4, the game that everyone's been waiting for in the Diablo community for so long, that getting announced, Diablo Immortal, obviously, people are a little bit more, you know, it's more hit or miss, obviously, but this is really exciting. There's so much happening in the Diablo universe. Diablo 2 Resurrected, you got Diablo 4, a mobile game in Diablo Immortal, this universe is just growing at a rapid rate, guys, and it's really exciting to see because obviously this is going to give you hundreds upon hundreds of hours of playtime on Diablo 2 Resurrected. When you're getting sick and tired of playing that, you can move over to Diablo 4 or to play on your mobile device, whatever the case might be. There's more ways than ever here in the near future to connect with Diablo than ever before. So the gameplay, while we've only had a couple of trailers drop, Diablo fans have been have seen plenty of what's going to be an offer this September thanks to the Diablo 2 Resurrected Alpha, which ran back in April. Players got some hands-on time with the Amazon, Barbarian, and Sorceress, but the Alpha was limited to single player only. So Blizzard has stated that while Diablo 2 Resurrected will take full advantage of today's modern gaming hardware, the hack and slash gameplay of 20 years ago has been preserved albeit with a few modern tweaks. So, improved graphics and surround sound support, that's awesome. Cross-platform progression, absolutely awesome. Expanded and shared stash, auto gold, auto loot, there you go. New hotkeys as well as controller support, that's really awesome. So the controller support is awesome. Accessibility options, as far as pre-orders, guys, you can pre-order your copy of Diablo 2 Resurrected. Um, 
And, you know, obviously it's going to be coming out September 23rd. Um, you know, that's really awesome. You're going to get early access to the multiplayer beta this August if you do pre-order it, which is absolutely, you know, that's really cool as well. As far as the outlook goes, modernizing old games for new hardware is no bad thing. And with Diablo 2 Resurrected, it looks like Blizzard is taking the smart approach, offering some neat changes and a graphics boost without changing the essence of the original game. We'd need some hands-on time before we cast any real judgments, and I agree, but for people um, after a new Diablo game, then September could be a good month for them, you know, and that's really exciting as well. I mean, you know, there's just so, there's so much to be excited about in the Diablo community, whether we're talking Diablo 2 Resurrected, whether we're talking Diablo 4, there's so much to be excited about because this is going to really kind of help you with, you know, while you're waiting to get your hands on Diablo 4. This is really going to help with the time, updated graphics and things of that nature. One of the best, you know, Diablo titles in the entire franchise was Diablo 2. So it's really exciting to say the least that this is going to be coming and it's right around the corner. But with that being said, everyone... What do you guys think about Diablo 2 Resurrected? Are you extremely excited about it? Let me know in the comment section down below. And for more Diablo 2 Resurrected content and videos, stay here with Zero TV. Elden Ring is a title that I've been covering on the YouTube channel, guys, ever since it got announced, which you guys can check out all of my Elden Ring content here on the YouTube channel, but I want to talk, guys, after we got some new information that came out about this title, I definitely wanted to cover it, that being everything that we know now about Elden Ring. So let's get into it. In an article, guys, written by Lauren Morton of PC Gamer, everything we know about From Software's next game. So Elden Ring is finally reemerged, not in a leak and not in a cryptic hints. It's very real and it's coming relatively soon, actually. It isn't making it out of 2021, but it's arriving in January of 2022. So obviously we got our first gameplay trailer, guys. Definitely check that out if you guys haven't already. Elden Ring did show up at the Summer Game Fest event hosted by Jeff uh, Keighley at the start of E3. And this three-minute trailer from, from Software showed off a good chunk of gameplay with all sorts of familiar Souls game action. The art design is absolutely Souls, and a lot of the series staples are here too. Um, all the important stuff from the Elden Ring trailer, guys. There are six main areas in the world, each controlled by a demigod boss and containing a more traditional dungeon. There's now mounted and combat. Multiplayer is in. Co-op is confirmed to support four players. Invasions are unclear at this point. You can summon the spirits of dead enemies and use them in battle. There's a stealth system has weather and time systems. There's a fast travel system. I mean, guys, the list goes on and on. What's absolutely awesome, though, about Elden Ring and this title is that's going to be a full package. You got multiplayer, you got co-op, you got a story. That's awesome. I always talk on the YouTube channel, guys, about full packages. Having all three of those things really justifies the price tag of a $60 game. When we look at multiplayer, co-op, and, and a story... It, it gives you so much, so many different reasons to play it and, and to purchase. And that's what's so awesome about this. Elden Ring has it all, guys. It just comes down to the execution at this point. So let's talk about a major point of this title is the number of choices you have available in combat. So while you can just choose to go in head on, we also have a number of alternative elements, such as being able to summon the spirits of deceased enemies and use them as allies in battles. So we have a number of elements that let you approach different situations at a high level of freedom, which is awesome, brings in a lot of creativity as well from the community. There's a large variety of ways you can approach combat and a large range of abilities you can acquire. We want to allow the player to combine these different elements to find their own strategy and even take in indirect approaches to combat if they wanted to. So progression, with this increased sense of scale and this vast new map, we had to allow for a certain amount of progression and reward no matter which direction the player took and which path they take because of that high level of freedom. You will find those elements to battle and those elements to just exploring the world, which will allow you to keep that going. You can customize and craft items on the go by using materials found in the world. 
So the world design, it's divided into six major areas, and these are the domains of the major demigod characters. While the areas are lined up in a way so that you would normally tackle them in a specific order, you don't have to follow it. We wanted to give a free level of progression and exploration throughout the lands between, so there's a lot of different ways. You won't be able to access everything from the start, but there are a lot of different ways you can approach each area, and there's a lot of freedom as to which order you tackle different areas as well. Notice the, the a couple of words here, freedom. A lot of like just creativity. You can kind of tell that there's a lot of creativity and such, and a lot of different ways that you can do things. I love that. One main theme, this is from the boss design of the main bosses of the game in particular, are that they are essentially demigods and they inherited the mad tainted power of the Elden Ring shards once it was shattered. We wanted to depict these beings as not just creatures and horrible monsters, but have an element of heroism and an element of mythology to them. Essentially, they are the old gods of this world. They each fell to madness and fell to ruin in their own individual ways. So while there is heroic and mythological elements to them, they are also going to have this very mad taint and this deep-seated ruin to them. Awesome screenshots, guys. Obviously, we've got a release date of January 21st, 2022. I'm going to have a ton of content, guys, about Elden Ring up until and even after, obviously, when this title comes out. It's awesome that January 21, 2022, guys, uh, it's coming. And, you know, it's I think that's something that's going to be really, really exciting. So, to say the least, guys, what's the setting here? So the lands between created by George R. R. Martin, the, of course, guys, the very famous, very famous for uh, Game of Thrones, um, the world of Elden Ring, the lands between are blessed by the presence of the Elden Ring and by the Erd Tree, which symbolizes its presence, and this has given grace or blessing to the people throughout the land, great and small. What this represented in them is a sort of golden light or this golden aura that's specifically shown in their eyes. And this symbolizes the blessing of the grace of the Erd Tree. However, after a time, there were some individuals who lost this grace and the light faded from their eyes. And these are what are known as the Tarnished. So, um, what's interesting is George R. R. Martin, he actually wrote the overarching mythos after Elden Ring's announcement, Miyazaki explained a bit of how GRRM was involved with this project. When they got to work, Miyazaki began by explaining his overall vision to Martin, describing what sorts of themes, ideas, as well as many game-related aspects he envisioned. This allowed us to have many free and creative conversations regarding the game, in which Mr. Martin later used as a base to write the overarching mythos for the game world itself. And that's just really exciting, guys, knowing that Jar Jar R. Martin has his handprint kind of all over this game. It's pretty exciting. So Elden Ring is from software's biggest title in uh, like in terms of sheer volume. So Miyazaki says that the world of Elden Ring will be ripe for exploration. He confirms that it will take place in an open world, which he refers to as a large open field to play in. While Dark Souls is relatively unrestricted in how it allows you to explore, it sounds like Elden Ring will, will be even more so. So Miyazaki also calls out some of the environments we may find in Elden Ring's big open field. Among those areas, you will also find intricately designed multi-layer castles and such, which is absolutely awesome. Um, you got the, the Dark Souls 3 composers working on Elden Ring. That, that is awesome. Um, and, you know, overall, guys, when I look at this title, overall, after watching the trailer and such, I was already excited about it, but now I am really excited about this title. This is a title, guys, that could really be something special, if done right and, and well, and we don't have to wait that long. I mean, January 21 of 2022, guys, that's not that far away when you really think about it in terms of how th long I thought it was going to take for this game to come out. I thought it would probably be 2022, maybe 2023. But January of 2022, let's go. I am totally on board with that. And I'm very excited to get my hands on a copy and create more content like this for you guys. Let me know, though, in the comment section down below. Are you guys excited about Elden Ring? Let me know. And for more Elden Ring content and videos, stay here with Zero TV. And with that being said, everyone, I hope you guys did enjoy this episode of The 8 Below Show. And if you guys did, leave a thumbs up, subscribe if you're new, stay positive, and as always, I'll talk to you guys all 
in the next one. Peace.